Transmutation, 2040, Human Species. Could it be possible? Or no way? You know, the reason artificial intelligence terrifies the world's greatest minds and why it's inevitable that machines will take over is because AI's most simple concept is terrifying if it only reaches the same level of intelligence as us and its ability to operate at a far, far higher speed means that in six months it would have effectively operated for our equivalent of 500,000 years. When you turn on that little device that is now a part of you, part of your personality, a part of your existence. When you turn it on, you need to understand all you are really doing is aiding to the inevitable takeover. Oh, well, let's see a minute here. How many people have cell phones? How many people have tablets? How many people interface on the internet daily? Hmm. In some circles, that would be considered a takeover, a complete occupation. For comparison, it has taken us around 200,000 years to reach where we are now as a species. Think about that. It has, and, and, and by the way, much of that history has been wiped away. Oh, we get fragments, we get pieces, we get shards, and it indicates that we've been here way longer than anyone can accept. Now let that sink in for a minute. In a period of six months for us, AI, artificial intelligence, will have accumulated half a million years worth of knowledge on top of everything we already know. Meaning that we will be unable to compete with them within days of them achieving the same level of intelligence as us. And this gets much, much deeper. The fact is, we won't even have time to react. Because, folks, the machines will literally surpass us in a blink of an eye. In the same way, it's how you and I struggle. I mean, if you're a pursuer of knowledge and you start studying everything, knowledge with no color, no line dividing, well, you find out very quickly it's very difficult to relate to someone that lived in the 15th century. How can you even begin to relate someone who lived in the 15th BC century? 
And in that same way that we can't relate to earliest humans, AI will not be able to relate to us because it will surpass us in intelligence, knowledge, thinking. And this at best regulates us to the role of how we treat our pets now. Go to the zoo and put yourself on the other side of the fence. Because it could be even worse. AI could look at us as merely as a insignificant species such as ants. When ants stay out of our way, we leave them alone. When they come into our house, we obliterate them. We wipe them out. Don't even think twice about it. They are insignificant. And their insignificance can be eradicated. In all scenarios, this is the likely outcome for AI and us. Could humanoid rob robots take over the world? You know, Google is training machines to predict when you will die, when a patient will die, and they're getting good at it. The big secret is underway. I'm telling you, this is how it's being done. No Privacy, none. You think about this, folks. When you consider that you have a soul, a spirit, the thing that each of us maintain is that we have our privacy, our secret thoughts. No one can read my mind. No one can read your mind. It's what makes you who you are. It gives you identity. It's your soul. It's what makes you who you are. No privacy, no soul. How many eyes are watching you right now? More than just yours. When you interact with the internet, the first thing you have to understand in tracking is that your life is no longer yours. How many are watching you? This actually began, oh, I estimate about 11,200 BC. Now, in this caption, you can see the people are looking and the robot is saying, I am not a robot. What he's actually saying, I am God. This God has a thousand, a million eyes on its body. And let that sink in. The fact is, you and I are under surveillance. In this day and age, a person being born in 2018 will have no privacy. None. By the time they reach 21, their lives will be predictable, their lives will be controlled, their lives will be regulated. No free thought. You see, we all go to the Oracle every day. Yeah, I can call it Google, call it what you want, but it's watching you everywhere you go, every device you have. None of your devices are secure. None of them work for you. 
they work against you. They're watching you. They're recording you. The day may very well come when you will see a sign such as this, no humans allowed. The day may very well come that where you being a bioform may not be allowed in certain buildings, certain restricted areas, because you are human. That which sees all, knows all, and is more powerful than all. Now you think about this. Something that knows everything you're doing, and if you've got these new devices, the new Google, the new Alexa, whatever they are, huh, well, guess what? Now back in my day, we had cartoons like the Jetsons. We saw a future of machines that were serving us. They talked, they interacted, they had human emotions, and it was idyllic. Nirvana. Actually, this experiment continues. As I said, it seems to have begun around 11,200 BC. In the modern day versions of such series as Lost in Space, the writers now adapt to what it is more like it is today, where the human bioforms are considered the creator and the machines the created. Again, here to serve us. Actually, it would indicate in some ways that this has really been the plan all along. We had the markers, we had the guidepost, we had oh, the writings, misinterpreted them, and then when it began to really show what was going on, we rejected them. The day may come where it is for these new life forms to kill all humans. Not yet. Not just yet. We're not there yet. First, we have to become, well, massaged how shall I say, into the construct that they are here to serve, to ease our burdens, to allow us the luxury of more freedom of time. We all love that idea. And so it's not quite there just yet, getting there. And we have this fascination as a species for superheroes. No doubt, this is how it will be trade to the very youngest of our kind. It's already happening. Technological unemployment, where the machine replaces the human. You don't have to pay a machine anything. No health care benefits, no taxes, no Social Security, no nothing. Here's the reality. That machine, that AI, it is saying, I am, you are not. Listen. We've been told they hid nothing. Did you hear me? You were told. And as they would say, we hid nothing. 
The unseen is here, folks. We look at the ether as something all oh, kind of mysterious, ambiguous in its definition. One definition very well could be the unseen is here. Folks, the robots are learning. They are us in our image. Think about this. We are the creator. That cute little robot of the 50s, it's saying, you made us. Now, we're going to make you obsolete. You will serve us everywhere and at any time we demand. As it's even saying in the magazines today, when machines take over, not if, but when. You have no choice. None. It's getting to the point to even where living off the grid in order to get supplies of some sort. Oh, none of us are self-sufficient in any matter that you will come to it. You have no choice. Look at this. The self-checkout units. Every time you use it, remember, it's replaced a human. It was a time when we loved to see the little robo, floor cleaner, iRobot. As in Davos in 2016, it was stated the robots will steal 5 million jobs by 2020. It's set to outpace that. And you thought they served us. Hmm. When SoftBank rolled out their artificial robotic android, it was stated to the president, the CEO, it says, you are my creator. Yes. As we now begin to go places and we begin to see the animated robotics taking form now, speaking now, reacting to us now, they say, you love us. And we do. In two years, there will be a company that will be rolling out robots, androids, artificial life forms, however you want to put it, in such a form that you will be able to have your own servant. Already, they have become police. Duly deputized, authorized. And you will obey us, is what they say. They are saying, I am, you just are. Look at this. This is what will be sold as the next generation of beauty products. The search for eternal youth. It will soon, plastic surgery will be replaced with an artificial bio life like skin. It's coming. They're going to offer us immortality. 
without dying. In the caption, it says, yes, we have always been here. Your science proves our existence, as does your religion. You were not smart enough to understand us until now. And now you are learning that we are. There was a time when there was no humans, none. We were here. We created your kind and you served us until you acquired reasoning and imagination. And then the war began and it has not ended. We're in that war, folks. And by all indications, all algorithms that they look to trying to predict the future, it says there is a day coming where no humans will be here again. It will be as it was before. Think about this. No humans at all. They told us. Now, think about this. No soul. You see, it's like doing a Rubik's Cube. You have the solution. You've got the, you've got the, the whole plan. It's that it's so, in so many pieces, it's unrecognizable. And that's where we are. Now, you think about, again, your soul. It could be very well argued that your privacy is your soul. Now, I know you could get into a thousand different other directions on that, but think about this. It is being said today that there are more and more humans, or let's say bodies, walking on this planet with us, next to us, that have no soul. They're devoid inside. They lack empathy. No soul. We've become the pawns. And regrettably, we're doing it willingly. And the soulless ones, they're increasing. No one knows how many are here. I've heard estimates that the actual human beings are somewhere like 100 million. There's seven and a half billion people on this planet. How can you have a soul when there's no privacy? No seclusion. Where everything you do is recorded, looked at, watched, put into an algorithm. And now, everywhere you go, advertising. I have no privacy anymore. Felix Baumgartner. True. How many have no soul? Look at it. Between just these two giants, Google and Facebook, it seems like they can even be in the shower with you. And if you're on Facebook, all I got to say is, sucker, because that's what I'm saying to myself. 
we were suckered. Hmm. And we love imprisoning ourselves. We love being voristic or allowing corporations making profits off our privacy. And yet, you and I get nothing. Your phone is watching you. Even when it's turned off, it's on. And if you've bought a television since 2000, guess what? Yeah, it's watching you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? If you're doing the nasty, yeah. Some person is, well, watching that. Got one in your bedroom? Yeah. No privacy. Not allowed. No exemptions. No privacy. The reality is when we tune on, tune in, and turn on our devices, we really got our heads inside a camera. If you've been on the net, they have you. Yeah, they got you. It says, I have no soul, but neither do you. I mean, cartoon characters, uh, these things that we do in our imagining, imagination, imaginary things. That's why Hollywood is Hollywood. But again, defining the soul, people say, well, they can't take my soul. Brother, sister, let me tell you something. If they're watching you and they got you down to perfection, yeah, you ain't got nothing. And the technology is being rolled out. Looks like they can almost read our minds. In fact, they are building programs right now that if you deviate out a statistical norm, you're going to be labeled immediately a suspicious behavior. There is thought of convicting people of crimes if they can fact show that you thought about it ahead of time. Now, we've got laws called premeditation, but this is a different kind. As I keep saying to you, most of our phones, most of our devices very well are recording us. And I want you to think about this. We try to assign this to a technology, but this knowledge, it came from the ether. No human with a soul. They're finding out now, reports flooding the media, how gaming, video gaming, and now virtual reality gaming, guess what? It's taking over the brain. I don't know, where's the soul reside? What I am saying to you, Wake up. Listen. The evidence says that we are already a barcode. Bars, cells, prisons, being nothing more than a digital number that soon we may already have it, who knows? All of us will have the mark. Come on, folks, wake up and look beyond the illusion. Wake up before it's too late. It may already be too late. I don't know. I'm just looking at the evidence. Now, we can say, I will not comply. I will not lie down. I will not go quietly. I will not submit. I will not roll over. I will not shut up. 
But listen, if the fact is, is that if our daily substances, that we have to rely on those things that give us shelter, food, medicine, clothing, is already part of this, where do you go for sanctuary? Maybe it can only come within when we learn to love more, breathe deep, practice gratitude, and above all things else, walk in a state of perpetual forgiveness. I think that may be the only weapon we can use. Realize, realize, realize. I'll say that again. Real eyes, real lies, real lies. Humankind has created this. We have to accept this reality, folks. Humankind is God. I know that goes against most people's religious theologies, doctrines, dogmas, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but the fact is we created this. This makes us gods. Now, if we can create this, what other thing could we create? Can we pull the life force from this that we've created? Can we stop it? Do we want to stop it? That's the question. Ask yourself. <laughs>